just like throughout the album, there's random points where I'm like, I'm pretty sure that's John Bellion. What's up, friends? Today we're going to talk about the Jonas Brothers album, The Album. I know, it's a crazy name for an album. So, I'm not going to do like a proper reaction reaction to this. I'm just going to talk about my sentiments going forward. I've just been super slammed and busy. I've listened to this album like six times through, give or take, and I've loved it. It's one of my favorite albums of the year, and I didn't feel like I could go through the year, talk about all the things I talk about, and not hit on the album, because I think it's so good. Like, it's up there with the Skrillex albums, it's up there with Carol G's, Mañana Será Bonita. So let's talk about kind of how I approach the album, what I liked about the album, what I think works really, really well, what songs I think don't work quite as well, and a little bit of the production aspects. I'm a producer and songwriter, so that's going to be a part of the perspective here. So, so coming into this album, like knowing about the Jonas Brothers releasing a new album, I was a little skeptical because for Happiness Begins, I was really excited by the singles, especially Sucker. I think Sucker is just such a great song. Ryan Tedder killed it on it. And the Jonas Brothers kill it on it too. Honestly, like it was a really great comeback song. And there's a reason it was playing on the radio so much because it's just quality. But when I heard Happiness Begins, I was a little disappointed because I felt like the album wasn't anchored by anything. Like there wasn't a song that represented how the whole album felt. I felt like the album was just kind of all over the place sonically to the extent like it didn't even feel like oh all these songs don't really feel like they fit together on an album it's almost like these songs don't even feel like they fit together on a playlist like it's just uh, it was kind of messy in my perspective so I was really excited to hear that they had John Bellion helping them throughout this whole album not only because I am a John Bellion fan but because I thought that that could really help the cohesion to have one producer that is on every single song that being said, on this album, you don't only have one producer that's on every single song. You have three, John Bellion, Peter Nippy, um, Ten Rock, all on every single song. You also have Monsters and Strangers who are on most of the songs, but they're not on all of the songs. So, you know, they don't, they don't quite hit it. There's like two songs that they're not on, so they're on most of them. And there are other producers involved with this record as well, other writers. But you've got to mention those three because they are literally credited on every single song as being a part of this. And I do think that the John Bellion influence comes through on this album in a really big way. You especially see it in the vocal harmonies and the use of vocals throughout this album. I feel like I'm actually hearing John Bellion's vocals on songs like Americana in the background, but I, just like throughout the album, there's random points where I'm like, I'm pretty sure that's John Bell, and I wouldn't be surprised if he's adding some layers to those harmonies to give it more of a big choral effect. The harmonies sound super John Bellion, like so John Bellion that it's ridiculous. The drums, a little less so. I think he had slightly less involvement with the drums than we would be led to believe just because they're not as strange as you would expect from John Bellion. They're still a little strange. You still have stuff that's like slightly off following that kind of Dilla rhythm, but it's not as pronounced as we would expect it to be, especially on an album like Glory Sound Prep or Human Condition where John Bellion is completely at the helm and he gets to make all of those decisions. You can tell that he's still here, though. He is very present on this album, and his voice and his perspective is really relevant. A lot of the media going on with this album is calling it, like, 70s-inspired, and I kind of see it. I see how there's, you know, some influences from 70s music, but... I don't think it's as strong as it's made out to be. I think it sounds really, really modern, and that's a compliment to it. And I just feel like 
the the seventies inspired thing is a little overblown in the descriptions of the album. I think there's definitely some funk. There's a lot of pop inspiration, but seventies strictly, I don't know. I don't know what I would call it. That um, it just sounds way too modern to be called that. It's just a really good modern pop album, and I don't think they need to attach that stigma to it. So those are some of my overall thoughts on the album and on the production. Now I want to talk about a few songs that I thought were really, really good. I thought Americana it was just brilliant. I liked the kind of post-chorus bridge section after the second chorus. I thought it just felt like a nice, easy breakdown. We kind of like built into this big thing and then it's just like this. Americana. And you just you just kind of letting the instruments play, which on a pop album isn't as common. Chorus is really catchy, and I think the verses are way catchy. Like the verses are catchy enough to be a chorus. They're drawing a lot of thing from these kind of rhythmic hooks, and in that sense, they are taking from a bit of the '70s because that was something that James Brown did a lot was use a lot of like rhythmic hooks. So I'm seeing that James Brown influence in a big way, but. I think, again, it, it, it's just as modern as it is 70s, so I'm not, not fully on that boat. But Americana is great. My brother is your brother, my sister is your... And I also really liked Vacation Eyes. I thought Vacation Eyes was such a standout track. It just felt so romantic. I really liked the writing on it. I really liked the descriptions of love, the... And it was just so relatable. Like it was one of those concepts that once you hear it, you're like, oh yeah, like that is a way we get when we're really infatuated by someone. We look at them with like vacation eyes, with just like the ease, the fun times, the relaxation in just seeing them exist. Waffle House is also phenomenal. Like, I think the messaging on it is really, really good. It describes a family dynamic really well. And it's still catchy while it does it. The harmonies, drums, instrumentation on it are super brilliant. There's a lot of really great uses of energy. I got vacation eyes. And I'm gonna have them for the rest of my life. And... Yeah, I'll, it's a lot of that like kind of midsection of the album is just really strong in general. Summer in the Hamptons, which comes right after Vacation Eyes, just, I, I love that hook. I love how it goes into this instrumental section of the chorus. There's also like a little vocalization, but the vocalization is less like word focused. It's kind of like, mm, 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 while the guitars are kind of, going more wild and I like the kind of stacked harmonies for the verses that is super John Bellion to have these like really stacked harmonies lead into this really strange portion it's like Sex 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 it's just smart it's smart songwriting and that's what I like to see and it's smart production too to have everything kind of build up so much and then just drop the energy just like pull it back you know, and everything kind of like falls away for a second. You have the summer in the Hamptons and then you keep going. It's a very addicting album to listen to. Like once I get to walls, I'm like, now I want to start the album over again. I want to listen to this whole thing again because I just really enjoyed that experience. And I found myself doing that over and over again because I'm just so interested by it. It's just something that you can easily have on the background to let yourself think or you can dig deep into it to enjoy really specific elements of it which is kind of rare. As far as weaker tracks go, I don't love Wings. Like from when I first heard it, I was just kind of skeptical. It's grown on me for sure. It's not my favorite, but it's still good. That's kind of my perspective on it. Uh, I just don't feel like it was as strong. It felt a little more cliche. It felt... felt more tangential felt more like it was derived it was more derived from others work so a little a little derivative it's still good it's still strong I still think it works but I just don't think the instrumentation maybe was like the best on it I don't think that that 
kind of electric piano at the beginning is as strong as some of the more realistic sounding components that we have throughout the rest of the album. And it even kind of like, it sticks out because of that. It doesn't feel as organic and real as everything else on this album. It's not as, it, it, there's still like a lot of really great stacked vocals, but the vocals aren't used in as many other interesting ways. And I know it's their, it's, it's, it's the lead single. It's like the first song they released from the album. So of course it's supposed to be there to have some major impact, but I don't know. I don't know. I'm just. So Wings is just not, not as prominent for me. And Walls as well, like I wasn't as in love with Walls. I think it's a good closer song and I think it's functional as a closing song for the album. Nothing against it, really. But I just don't think it's as strong as some of the other tracks on the album. Also, don't really get why it says featuring John Bellion. I feel like I can hear the distinction of John Bellion's voice more on other tracks throughout this album. And maybe he's doing that kind of stacked harmony thing that you have at the end. And that's what they're talking about. And it's kind of throughout um, that, that happens on walls. Maybe the lyrics were a little more personal to John Bellion on this song. I don't really know, but I don't know why it says featuring John Bellion. Maybe someone else can explain that to me better than I'm understanding it, just looking at the the song. I like the little crowd stuff leading into Little Bird as well, just quick little, you know, honorable mention for Little Bird. And it's a cute song. I really like the lyrics, I think it works really well. It's kind of like this parent to child type song. They did release this album leading up to Mother's Day. So maybe that was part of the inspiration as they knew when this would come out. I'm not 100% sure, but I do think it's a good song. So those are my thoughts on the album. I hope you're enjoying it as much as I am. And I hope my thoughts have increased your enjoyment to some extent in this album. If they have, really appreciate if you like, comment, share, subscribe. Did you like this way of talking about an album? Do you really just prefer the other reaction style I have? Let me know in the comments. Also, would love it if you checked out my music. I've got a fun album that I would say has some John Bellion inspiration in it that's called Giovanni. So if you like John Bellion stuff and you like his influence on the Jonas Brothers. You might like that as well. That's it. Catch on the flip. If you love me, won't you tell me?